Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. It's June 2019. I've got a few more washing machines in the garage, an interesting one, a top loader. I've got a few projects going on as well. So we'll have a quick look around and this will be a quick update video. Stay with me. So having a quick look around, the first thing on the line is the Bosch WOK 2001 washing machine. It's a top loader. I've never had one of these before. Lick. Whoa, fell down the back cable. Magic. So the top lifts up, stays up. It's got a bit of yellowing at the front here, but all in all, it's pretty okay. It's got a main wash soap drawer, pre-wash soap drawer. I don't think it's been used in a while, but it had water in it when I drained it off. And there'll be a lint filter video coming up, as usual. It's got, you put the, um, what's that called? You put the fabric softener in there. And in here, you rotate it that way, apparently. It's got an arrow on it. Don't know if it makes any difference, really. It's got this little door on it. You push that down and then it springs springs up. The handle fits in this little groove. And then you can reach in and uh, get your laundry out. It's got three paddles in there, I think, yeah. And it appears to have a bearing on either side. So I'm not sure, it does still flex and all like, like a regular washing machine. I'm not sure how this is built and I might take it apart for my own fun. The plan is to put it into service in the house because it's a good machine and I paid, I think, 40 quid for it. An interesting thing altogether. All stainless, I presume. Although, let's just get a magnet. So I presume it's all stainless, but no. The magnet sticks to the heavier parts, but it's, it doesn't really stick there. Let's see. It really sticks to the drum. So some of it's stainless of some level, different levels of stainless in there. It has a couple of interesting features like this black lever on the bottom and if you slide that from side to side it rises up onto some wheels and then you can move it around. I think these are, I don't know if they're designed for, but I think they're popular with the elderly because you don't really, you still have to bend over but you don't have to get down on your knees to load it up and unload it and whatnot. So yeah, there you go. It's, it's a similar model to the WFF series that I have. And I guess if it's a WOK 2001, it's similar to a WFF 2001, and the OK is something to do with the top loading. Don't know. FF could be front something. Don't know. Don't know at all. But um, it's got a. It's actually fancier because it's got a countdown timer. So when you turn it on, it tells you how long each cycle is going to be, and it also has a feature where you can delay the start, which is kind of good, useful maybe. Lint filter on the bottom, lint filter video will follow, as I said. Over here there's a bathroom suite, which may feature as a video in the distant future on how to swap out a bathroom, which is not a really difficult job, but uh, this is a Hot Point Aquarius WF310. I think it's just a washing machine, yeah, I think so. It has a really good set of bearings on it. Let's have a listen. Oh, we're not really... There you go. Let's see if we can get a really good swing on it. Yeah, clanky clanky. So I think we'll make a few videos with this as well. It's one of these um, hot points where the filter isn't down on the front. If you have a look there, nothing there. So we'll have to suss that out and put up a video of that as well, as usual. I have a feeling I'm going to destroy this, so if, you, uh, if you're one of the many subscribers who likes a smashy smashy video, this one might be for you. And then to describe why I'd smash it, well because the bearings are knackered. <laughs> I'm not going to fix the bearings in a machine that I think I found, yeah I found this one on the street just as I was driving along. It's not worth fixing, it's faded, it's bits rubbed off it, you know these machines have zero value, so yeah it'll go for scrap. What else is going on? Well, I don't know if I'm going to make a video of this. I've taken some footage of it, but it's a... Let's try and get it in the frame there. It's an 8x4 sheet of insulation. And then I've got a 22 mil pipe here. And then 6 mil pipes with a 4 mil bore. About 20 something of them there. And the idea is to make a big solar panel. I've kind of stalled on that because I've just got a real solar panel. For heating hot water so I might add this to the system later but the weather's not been good enough to spur me on so it's just lying idle. The 
grindstone motor speed controller project is still on the go and I actually in six months haven't done anything with it which I'm quite disappointed with but uh, that's just how things move sometimes there's another job coming on upstairs not this bathroom suite but another bathroom suite I'm doing upstairs in the house it's a wet room wooden bath shower toilet sink it's a big effort because there's a lot of other stuff to do in an old house before you can even begin to fit the bathroom. So I'm working on that at the moment. I might make a video of making a wooden bath or how I've made a wooden bath when I get around to it. When I make it, it's not the top of the list. First thing is to get the wash hand basin and shower and toilet fitted and then you've got a working bathroom and then the bath can just be fitted later because it's going to be Japanese onsen style, just freestanding with taps coming out from the wall. So that's in the future as well. In the workshop, I fitted a set of wooden doors which are all slightly different to the inside so that in winter this room could be heated like a regular room it has insulation in the top it's got dry lining in the sides with no insulation unfortunately but it's more to have it sealed up from outside so that whenever i'm in here in winter i can just have a little fan heater or something like that one up there on and that will uh and that'll keep me toasty got a benson and hedges sign you don't really see tobacco advertising anymore so I've got my big Castrol service sign and I've got my shell sign from the totem pole off a garage, both of which I got from the original garages and same with the Benson and Hedges sign. It didn't, didn't pay for either of the three of these actually, which is a bit rare really with signs and stuff. Normally I'd pick them up at car boot sales and things, but I guess because they're really big, they're just ones I found as people were renovating and just a bit of good luck and timing and whatnot. So yeah, epic. This this casserole one, is, it's on aluminium, but it appears to be hand-painted. You can see in the bottom of the letter A there, you can see the brush strokes on it. And down here as well. It's a pretty neat thing. It's not printed at all. It's, it is actually painted and the red's faded, the green's faded somewhat, but the service is done in a black gloss paint. You can see on the S there, the sweep, sweeping of the paint lines. It's pretty cool. A big shell sign, the corners nibbled off it. I think it must have broken on the way down. Actually, I remember there was, you know, there's one on each side of the totem pole. This one was the good one, and the other one had been hit by a stone or something. It was completely shredded, so I only took the good one. But uh, I think it's pretty cool because it's the old, it's the old style shell. I got it when they were changing the logo on the garage, possibly 20 years ago, which is a bit scary. But there you go. The motorbike's for sale. It's, it's just sitting there waiting for someone to buy it and give it a bit of love. It's 20 years old. It's a BMW K1200 RS sports tour. Hasn't been used in the last five years, but has have it, had an MOT put on it every year, so it's still got an MOT. It's a pretty sweet bike. Goes like a, like a steam train, just would pull all day on a motorway. It's not great for driving around town because it's so cumbersome and heavy but it still it still rides really easy once you've got your feet up it's just maneuvering it in and out of the garage is the pickle what else have i got going on there's my mortiser i have to do a bit of work to that because i dropped it taking it out of the van as you do what else can i show you i've got a couple of air compressors recently this one which has a broken port and this one which i know was working before it got covered in sawdust got a load of electric motors as well i've been finding loads of good stuff recently a really big motorcycle wheel off a vintage bike, probably an old English one. Got one of those big, massive, million billion candle power, what is it, 15 million candle power torch. And then over there underneath the lathe, which is a project under that, underneath that blanket, it's an old Britannia lathe, which you'll find in one of my videos if you go searching back for it. I've got some motors there and the plan is to make that work. I've seen uh, Renoa, super genius at the moment, has been doing some lathe videos, so I'll keep an eye on what she's doing and try and catch up a bit I'm not really great on the lathe but uh, well a bit of experience is all you need really with these things the other thing that came to pass on YouTube recently from bigclive.com and Renoa as well was uh, uh, Aussie 50 one of my inspirations for washing machine destruction uh, happened to kill himself recently which really really upset me I think there was a few days there where I was a bit taken aback because the way YouTube works you just hear a rumor and the channel's still there and it's quite sad really there really isn't much more to say other than it's quite sad and quite upsetting and uh i think i'll certainly miss i'll certainly miss ed like that all right i'm not sad no thanks for watching see you later